All right, so here's the deal. You guys know what to do uh, on our system. I can pretty much trust all of you for the most part. I sincerely mean that. Uh, you have a quiz on portal. Please uh, go on and log in. Please go slowly. When you are done, you guys know the deal. Just hands like this and just back away. Just kind of just take a step back. Okay, Ashton, hello. Again, you have a quiz on portal. When you are done, hands away and just, uh, and you're good to go. We can start, right? You can start, yes. I'm just gonna take roll. If you hear your name, just say here. Nick is here, Jackie is not. Benny's here, Vasilia, so Alley Girl. Kevin is not here. Fiona is not here. Uh, Steven's here. Isis is here. Ashton's here. Kennedy. Armand, I saw Ben's here. Leo and Terry. Okay, perfect. Yes, Ali. Did you already mess up? Well, for the first question, when you said inaccurate detail, do you mean the code or explain what the main method is? Je no, the code in detail, okay. as in, as in ex like extreme detail, as in like accurate, like. No misspellings, any. Just that one line for the main method? Correct, yes. Okay. Keep the things that hold in all the other codes? Uh, I already answered that question yesterday. Okay. Remember that the screen will just go blank. It auto submits after five minutes.
Okay, so it looks like that is everyone. Um, so just giving you a heads up that like, so for example, Leo, um, your brackets, they go in the middle. Technically they will still work. String bracket args. So I cut you some slack as well. Also a side note, Ashton, you're the only one who did not turn in your homework. Okay, so right now it's late, all right? So, all right guys, good job on the quiz. Uh, you're, you're, it's already graded, it's online. Okay, uh, I'm glad some of you took it slowly as you could tell there was a couple trick questions there. Okay, um, I, but again, it's not meant to, what's the best way to say it? It's not meant to trick you like, as I told you guys yesterday when I said I'm gonna go after you, I mean that more in a sense of like, I'm really gonna test that you guys are going slow, reading the question, and I put roadblocks in there on purpose. I can't say what they are, obviously, because we still have people that need to take the quiz, and this class will be up before they take it, possibly. So that's why I can't go over exactly what it is. But again, when I say things like, I'm gonna go after you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go at you, it's more go slow. I, it's the trick question is not meant to actually make, it's not really like a trick question, but it's more on making sure the syntax is correct. Are we all good with that? Cool, okay, so that being said, what I need you guys to do, I need you guys to make a new project and I need you to make a new class. We have a lot of information that we're going to be covering today. And, um, and so not to mention that we also, um, we don't have class tomorrow, but you will still have a quiz next Tuesday. If for those of you who are a little worry warts about your quizzes, we're gonna have like 25 quizzes this semester, okay? Don't worry, you guys know my policy. I drop the lowest quiz, okay? So if you, if you just flake on one, don't worry about it, don't stress, okay? You're gonna have at least 65 to 70 assignments before the semester is done. All right, go, go ahead. Say what should we call the project? Okay, so call your, pro so we call the project variables, call the class tester, and go ahead and put the main method in there. Say that again. So it's going to be called variables and you're going to call this tester. And again, the good thing, the reason why as we're going chapter to chapter, you're going to be making new projects. So basically you guys are going to be making notes. Marty? You're pretty much building a study guide for yourselves. How do I, how do I delete a project? You right click on it, just choose delete. And, and that will just delete it. If you want to rename something, make sure you move it to the trash. Otherwise it's still there. And if you try to name it the same thing, it will recognize a folder exists. Uh, well, I apparently have a folder with the same name and I don't know where it is. I got just call it var then. You can just call the call project var right. or, or Java variables. Can classes continue to be the same name? Classes, yeah, because, because they're encapsulated in their own project. So this project doesn't know that this project exists. Good question. All right, here we go. So the good thing is you guys will remember a lot of this from last year um, when I taught variables in Python. So that's a good thing, okay? Um, but giving you guys a heads up, um, it's a little bit different. So if you guys have any questions, do not hesitate to, to stop and ask me. Are you good? Let me get a little more light in here. Hold on, my office is dark. All right, there we go. Okay, so Java is, now if you guys remember in Python, when we're learning Python, one of, I told you guys that I like teaching Java first. Python is what we call a type inferred. So basically, whatever you type in, the computer will do the assumption for you. You don't learn anything that way, okay? Java is a different type of language. It's what we call an object-oriented programming language. And in these languages, what we have to do is we have to be the ones to tell uh, the computer how to act. Now, we, whenever we make a variable, we have to tell the computer what type of variable we are going to be using. Okay, 
as well, what happens is when we do this with the computer, um, hold on one second, um, as well, the, the other thing is it's, the main reason we do this is because when Java was created, it was like the early 80s, memory was really important. Right now, your phone has like six to eight gigs of memory. There was no such thing as a phone back, like a mobile phone. Back then, computers had maybe one megabyte of memory, okay? So you're, you know, a thousand megabytes is a gigabyte. So you only had one megabyte. So when you're programming something, programming something, you had to be very conscientious of how much memory we were, you were using. Now that doesn't matter. We've got enough memory. We're just so advanced when it comes to that, we don't have to worry. But back then we did, and it kind of still stuck with it. So when we're do when we when we're making the type of variable, it's almost like making a table reservation. How many of you guys have ever called and reserved a table at a restaurant? Okay, are you guys actually there yet? When you get in, is the place full of people? Is your table empty? Okay, so imagine those tables over there are variables that have data in them. Your table is a reservation of memory for a certain amount of people that are going to sit there. And then when you sit down, that variable is full. It's like building a container. So what we're doing is we're actually reserving memory, okay? So we need to learn a, few, a couple of terms, and some of you guys who already had me, you guys know these terms. So right off the bat, we're gonna start off with the first variable. I'm gonna go back to it, but I'm just gonna use this as an example, okay? In Java, when I make a variable, I need to declare what type of variable it is. The second part of that is the name, okay? So this is byte A. The name of this variable is A. This is also what we would call a statement. Statements end in semicolons. When we had a print statement, it ended in a semicolon. Remember that, okay? So byte A, this was declaration. I declare a to be a, a, a variable. That variable is going to be a byte. Then I can say a equals 15. This one is called initialization. I have now filled a with a value. I have initialized or populated it. Either term works. Most of the time you'll hear initialization. When you think initialization, think of populating, just giving it value, okay? And then the last one, which I know you guys know this one, we're gonna say byte B equals 16. Byte B equals 16. This is single line declaration and initialization or SLDI. I will accept either. Okay. Now, once you've declared the variable, you don't have to say the type again. So for example, by A, I've already declared A. Notice that I didn't have to say by A again. I always get somebody who does that. And look what happens when I, when I try to do it. I get an error. By A already exists. When the computer sees byte, it's thinking, okay, you're ready to make another variable. You're ready to do something else. You, let's go. No, we're working with the same variable. Once you declare it once, you never have to do it again. Okay? Remember that. Also saves you time. You just have to refer to the variable name. Now, there are naming rules. Naming rules are in chapter two. I'm not gonna spend time going over those naming rules. That's something you guys are gonna to have to read and do on your own, okay? But you will be expected to know those naming rules. All right, and that is in chapter two towards the end. So, that being said, let's move on to our variables. Now, we covered a few variables last year at Python and stuff like that, but we're, it's a whole new ball game this time, all right? So the variables that we're gonna to cover today are what we call primitive. Okay, 
primitive variables. Now, primitive variables can only do one thing, store numbers. They don't have any special attributes. They can't really do anything else. They're literally containers to store numbers. And we're going to go low to high. The first ones that we're going to learn are called numerical primitives. And you guys already saw the first one, it's byte. So I'm gonna say byte C equals 15. Now, what's important to know is byte is eight bits. Byte can literally hold one keystroke, okay? Or, negative 128 to 127. So for example, let's say I put 215. I'm gonna get an error right off the bat. Notice that I've got an error. It doesn't work. It's going beyond the boundaries. The number 215 is larger than eight bits, okay? Now, the next one that we have is short, okay? Short D equals, let's say 3,760, 3, okay? Now short D, this one is 16 bits. Or 32,768. 768 to 32,767, okay? Why am I putting a space? All right. Now, in order to understand this, like with short, it's 16 bits. If you take two to the 16th power, that is 64,000 something, or 65,000 actually. If I split it in half with half going to the negatives and half going to the positives, this is where we get our range. This is a total of 65,000 some odd numbers, okay? Now, notice that this is 768 and this is 767. We include the zeros in the positive. So the positive side is always going to be one less than the negative side. So notice that this one is negative 128. That's because we include zero in the positive portion. We have to include zero. Does that make sense? All right. Now, I'm just giving you guys the ranges. You won't need to know these numbers. It's good to know them, but you won't need to know them, okay? Because I just happen to memorize these. I haven't memorized the other ones. I just know what the range is. Okay, now, int. This is the important one. Wait, Mr. Marty? Oi. Uh, did you mean uh, where it says 32,000? Do you mean negative 32? Negative, or negative? yes, negative. Sorry, negative. negative. Okay. okay. So int, int is short for what? Kennedy, what do you think int is short for? Integer. Integer, perfect. The AP subset, we only use ints. So when you're writing your program, can you use another type of variable if it suits? Yes, and you won't get marked off. But when we're table leader, when we're grading, we teach them to just look for ints. When you're free, right, when you're doing your free response, when it comes to numerical variables, you're only expected to use ints. You're not, you don't have to do byte short, okay? So int uh, e equals 8,999. Notice that I'm not putting a comma there. That won't work, okay? Now int is 32 bits. And it's, uh, I don't know the range offhand. I know it's negative 2 billion something to positive 2 billion something, okay? In order to find out the exact number, go two to the 32nd, divide that by two. Take that to the negative, take that to the positive, okay? And then the last one, again, this one is, is the, is the uh, it's the largest one that we use in Java for, not for numbers. Long. Okay, long is 64 bits. And this is negative positive nine trillion. So basically take two to the 64th, take that number. 
Let's cut it in two. Half goes this way to the positive, half goes this way to the negative. Okay? So, but the only one for primitive, numerical primitives, the only one that we need to know is int. Do you need to know all of these? Will you be tested on all of these? Absolutely. Again, I don't teach you to the test. I'm teaching you to be great programmers. I can give two shits if you guys pass this test or not. At the end of this course, you guys will be good programmers. Now, we have an issue. You guys probably remember this question. Isis, what is another way to write five? 5.0. Bingo, good memory, okay? 5.0. Now, as you guys remember, this is also for the people that have never had this class before. 5.0, computers, they haven't determined a way for a computer to say, oh, five is the same as 5.0. They haven't done it yet. Still, with all this processing power that we have, it's just not possible yet. So instead, we have to use primitive precision variables. Or sometimes referred to as floating point. So for example, your book will use the term floating point. Okay, all they're talking about is the decimal. The decimal moves from here to here to here to here to here. Okay, so there's two that we need to know. Float. Okay, float has to be different in a certain way in Java. It used to not be, but now it does. So let's say float FG. So float G equals 23.5 F. I have to add a lowercase f to it. Okay, you used to not have to do this. This is something that's new in Java. You could just put 23.5, okay? So a float is 32 bits. The up, now a float is not used in the AP Java subset, okay? And in real life programming, we, we still don't even use floats. We use doubles. So double H equals uh, 0.987, whatever, okay? Now remember, if you are starting off with just something in a decimal, you need to put zero point, okay? So double H equals 0.986. This is a double, and a double is 64 bits, okay? All right, does anybody have any questions regarding that? Mr. Marby? Yeah, what's up, Kenny? What did you say was the purpose of the lowercase f again? So lowercase f, what they did is, uh, my guess is there had something to do with a cutoff that it was getting too close or, or Java wasn't accurately, you know, giving enough memory to a float as opposed to a double. So the f is just a way to hard coat, almost like casting. So that, okay, this is only gonna use 32 bits. My, my assumption is it must have been some glitch in Java that they had to add this, okay? You'll need to know this for me. You will not need to know this for the AP exam. And literally after we move forward, you should still know it as common knowledge programmers, but I'll rarely test you on this. I can tell you right, on, right about this. I'll test you a lot on these. I rarely use floats anyway. So just know it, but I'm not really ever going to use it. Is that okay, Kennedy? Cool. Yeah, thank you. Uh, right, uh, Mr. So. Martinez? Yes, what's up? Uh, for long, uh, is it like uh, 65 bits or 64 bits? 64, oh, whoops. Everything's, everything's a power of two. Okay. okay. So okay. okay. All right. Got it. Sorry about that. Thanks for pointing that out. All right, so 64 bits. Now, okay. Other thing, now we're not gonna, we've covered casting before, we'll get to that later, but I wanted to show you guys something. So let's say I say int x equals 76. Int y equals 543. Int z equals x plus y. As long as x and y are both ints, as long as they're both ints, you can store them in an integer variable. Okay, as long as they're both ints, you can store them in an integer variable. All right, so 
if I were to print this out, okay, well, it would print out whatever the answer is. So on that subject of printing out, printing variables. So when we're printing out literals, what do literals need? What is literal? Quotation marks, yeah, quotation marks, okay. Come on, what was it? Sys out. There we go. So if you guys type in sys out and hold control and push space, it'll automatically just print out system.out.println. It's a little keyboard shortcut. Okay. So just give me you guys a heads up. Sys out, control space. That will just go ahead and print it out so you don't have to worry about printing it out all the time. Okay. So system.out.println, I want to see what Z is. Variables do not go in quotes. 619. Okay. But so that being said, let's say I gave you the question. I wanted you to write out X is 76 and Y is 543 and together they are 619. Okay, I told you to write this question. Okay, or I told you, you have basically this. And I told you to write this sentence. Technically, are you right? Could I take any points off you? No, because it's, it's literally correct, right? Right? You want us to concatenation though, right? In, in a little, give me a second though, but like, is this correct? Yeah. Yes, it is. But yes, so that's the thing. So what if, what if all of a sudden, 10,000 lines down, this became 987, and I had to revert to the sentence again. Now I gotta change this to 987. So we use the term, and again, you guys know it, but again, I have people that haven't learned it before. We have to use concatenation. And concatenation is basically the process of combining literals and variables. Okay. So what this allows me to do is it allows me to break apart from the literal and move to a variable. So what I, so in order to do that, so X is, remember, we have to add the spaces ourselves manually. I close the quote. I use a plus sign. This plus sign tells the computer, oh, you're switching to a variable. So I'm going to do X. I need to go back to my literal. I add another plus sign, add a space, because again, I got to do all the formatting myself. And Y is, I'm going to break, add another concatenation, add another space, I'm back to my literal, and I'm going to get rid of this, and I'm going to add Z. So, oops, not 543, that should be Y, sorry, okay? So now, X is 987 and Y is 543 and together they are 1530. Let's say I change this to 123. X is 987, Y is 123, together they are 1110. So what we're doing here is concatenation allows us to break away from the literal and just read the value of the variable, okay? allows us to break away temporarily and just read the value. That's all concatenation is. Now notice that I ended here on a variable. I can end on a literal. There's no errors. See what happens, take a look. I just have no answer. Perfectly legal, I just forgot the concatenation. The one there, the, here's the one mistake that I do see. You'll end on a plus. That's a no, no. Don't do that. I've seen it happen multiple times. It's a common mistake. That's a negative. Do not do that. You either end on the variable or you end on the quote of the literal. Understood? Now let's say I wanted to finish it with a period. Plus, quote, period, quote. Literally, I have to do everything. I have to manually format everything. So just to add that period, 
That's annoying, huh? But again, as I told you, you got to do all the formatting yourself. All right. Also in your book, when we do these, there will be some questions where that period or an exclamation point will be there. You'll need to do that. Okay. So that's concatenation. All right. So with concatenation, you know, we, these are, these are basically the numerical primitives that we have. All right. Um, does anybody have any questions so far regarding this? Int x, int y, int z, et cetera, et cetera. We're gonna, casting is a whole different subject in Java. It's a little bit more difficult, so we'll get into that later. So I don't really need to worry about, we're not gonna go into that today, okay? All right, so we've learned about these variables. The next ones that we're gonna learn, now we are going to spend the next two to three days on strings, okay? Strings are a special type of variable because they're not really a variable. But we do have two variables that specifically deal with letters, words, and not, like that can deal with everything. Okay. All right. The first one is a primitive alpha numeric. Okay. And it's called care. Care is not short for care bear stare, but rather a character, a single character. And it is written a certain way. So care, let's say uh, I equals, it is in apostrophes. Now care has some other special characteristics. We're not gonna go into those. We will go into those, we're gonna cover them, but we're not gonna go into those today, okay? So care I holds one letter, okay, it holds this is basically the keystroke five, okay? It's not the number five, it's the shape, the font of five, okay? And then the last one that we have is string. And what's different about string than all the other ones? The first letter is capital. It's capitalized. That is important. Keep that in mind, okay? That is gonna be ridiculously important as we move forward. It is capitalized. String acts like a variable when in fact it's actually an object. We'll go into what objects are later, but string uh, ij equals, how are you? Strings go in quotes. No ifs, ands, or buts. Strings go in quotes, hands down. Okay. Now you can put the, you can put an entire book into one string. There was one guy in the Midwest. He put the entire Bible into one string. Okay. As long as your computer has memory, you're good. So for example, like the Bible fits on 64, 64 gigs of memory. Okay. He, as long as you don't run out of memory, you're going. The string is reserving memory dynamically. It's the only one that does it. All the primitives, 16-bit, 32-bit, even if you're not using it, it reserves that amount of memory for you. Okay? So, Mr. Martinez. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For character, um, can you type anything else in there besides one single character? In here? For character? Yeah. Yep, I can do that, I can do that, I can do that, I can do that. Okay, but like, what's the restriction? There is no restriction, but we, but, but care has its own unique principles. Okay, we'll cover those in a few. Okay. All right. So for right now, so if we cover our variables, we have byte, short, int, long, float, double, car, and string. I can tell you right now, the ones you will need to know that you will be tested on, int, double, and string, okay? Besides those three, you should still know everything. You will be tested on this, okay? By the way, I'll have pro profs. I got the approval for pro profs officially, so I will have our quizzes will probably be on pro profs moving forward, okay? And again, I just generate your report. It's done. It's a lot easier, a lot faster for me to do it. Okay. Does anybody have any questions? 
I'm still not fully clear on char her character. You're worrying about it too much. Character, it holds a single keystroke. Okay. That's it. It's one character. A string is a string or a list of characters. Okay. Care is basically just short for character. Any keystroke. Okay, but again, don't get caught up. You will never see this on the AP. Okay, string, int, and double are the only ones you're ever gonna see. Uh, we will use them when we're programming because I'll ask you guys to use the appropriate variable type. But 99 times out of 100, you won't have to go outside of those three. You should still know them. Again, I don't teach to the test. I teach for programmers, okay? So, Marty? yes. Uh, you said that like each um, like data type, like they reserve a certain amount of memory yes. when, you, when you code them, right? Yes. I'm not asking like how you do it, but is there like, do you know of a way that people can make the reserved memory like dynamic or no? No, not with Java, it's not possible. Okay. C++ it is, because that's all it is, is memory allocation. That's what the big thing about it was, was dynamic memory allocation. Java, you can't. Okay. Okay, that's it, guys. Your homework for today, again, read chapter two. I gave you guys all the variables. We've covered concatenation. We covered how variables can be stored in other variables. Obviously, this is going to change a little bit, you know, because there's more rules. There's a little bit more complexity. But for the most part, we covered everything that we need to cover. Okay, it was a pretty productive class. Um, and again, the beautiful thing, this is why I like, I think that Zoom actually works really well in a class like this. You guys can always go back and just see the code. If you guys go on the, uh, on the, on the YouTube video, it comes out pretty clear. All right? So does anybody have any questions? What? Wait, what are we supposed to read chapter two for? Yeah, we're going to read chapter two, and your homework assignment is questions two through 12 evens. In the Just, blue pelican? In the blue pelican, yes. Okay. Okay. And also, guys, when you're submitting your homework, just go ahead and submit your answers into the submission box. Do not copy the sentence. I just need the answers and double space them. Okay. So that they're not all clumped together. It'll be easier for me to, for me to read and faster to grade. Okay. Is it, all right, are we good? Okay, is also. It, can, is it due Monday? Go ahead. Is it due Monday or Friday? Due tomorrow at 10 a.m. We don't have class, but I never let, but the good thing is you finish it tomorrow by 10 a.m. You don't have homework for this weekend. The only thing you have is you have to study for the quiz for Monday. Okay, also on top of it, I have to, uh, on Tuesday evening, they have asked me, the teachers go back to school. We started a virtual training. As you guys know, I'm the director of ed tech for the school. So they've asked me to run some workshops for the teachers. This conflicts with our class for that day, okay? So what I'm asking you guys just one day, Mr. Keller asked me to ask you guys as well. I'm gonna need you guys to meet with me later that evening. Our, what I may do is I may just do one class for everyone at 4.30 to 5.30, okay? And then I'll record it and I'll put both sessions up on Zoom, all right? Just Tuesday. And I'll send all of you guys an e email about it so that you have the time to prep, okay? All right, any questions, guys? I thought it was a good class, okay? We covered a lot of material. This is the stuff I wish we could be in person for, but we still got a lot done, all right? Okay, and for those of you, again, you're worried worries about your quizzes, don't worry about them. We're going to have like 20 to 30 of them. I dropped the lowest one. It's not going to hurt you if you didn't do well on this one. And Ashton, give me your homework. Please give me your homework. All right. Good, guys. Have a great weekend. Good seeing all of you. Uh, stay safe. Wear your masks. Thank you.